Hi, my name is Peter and welcome to today's session in which we're going to be discussing how to set out and build a mitered half brick surround and a basket weave panel. And if you look at the photograph on the left of your screen, you can see that's just what I've done. Okay, so the uh, mitered half brick surround relates to this brickwork that frames the panel, sits in the opening first and the mitered element uh, relates to the corners of the panels where we've cut the bricks to form that nice angle uh, from the horizontal to the vertical. The basket weave panel is a combination of three stretchers with three soldiers, three stretchers and repeated and alternating on subsequent courses. It's a nice simple panel to construct but it can look very effective and breaks up a wall quite nicely if you're looking for something just a little bit different. So. Let's move on and see where we're going today. There should be a number of things that you'll get from today's session. Uh, by the end of it, you should be able to list the resources required to build the surround and the panel. You should understand and be able to calculate the size of an opening that a basket weave panel will fit into without you having to cut anything. And uh, you should be able to produce a template uh, to form the mitered cuts and you should be able to describe to somebody else the sequence of operations to actually build um, the surround and the panel and hopefully uh, there'll be an opportunity for you within your own institution to uh, pop into the workshop and actually put this into practice and build something quite nice okay so basket weave panel dimensions it's really important that you Try and keep a nice, even, tidy joint when you're building basket weave panels. The joints are, are very visual, uh, especially those vertical joints that go from top to bottom. They'll need to be quite straight. Uh, and it's important that you keep, keep a consistent joint size. So when we're setting out the horizontal opening of a uh, panel, it needs to be multiples of 225 millimetres plus an extra 10 millimetres. So the panel I've just built was actually four bricks wide. Um, that would be four times 225, 900 millimetres, plus the extra 10. There's always an extra joint in an opening. You have a joint at both ends. And vertically on a basket weave panel, it's really important. Again, you keep gauge uh, more so than normal because there's an awful lot of soldiers going next to an awful lot of stretches and you want to keep a nice 10 millimeter joint between all of those and um, but it must work multiples of three courses so your basket weave panel can be three six nine twelve fifteen and so on courses high and um, you'll see in a moment the uh, size of the panel i've just built and we'll work that out to check just check it works the right sizes so just to repeat that uh multiples of 225 millimeters for uh, the horizontal plus an extra 10 millimeters and vertically again multiples of three courses and again the same gauge 225 to three courses so uh, this was my starting point forming the opening um, i took the drums up either side of of that opening and as you can see it's four bricks wide 910 millimeters and i've gone 15 courses high Okay, uh, building both sides, uh, it's important that you use a line one side to the other because once you go over the top of that opening, it comes back into being a, a, a single wall and you don't want to lose any, any face alignment uh, if you're slightly out of plumb one side or the other. Okay, so now we understand how the opening needs to be formed, the sizes that we'll have to construct at that too. Uh, let's just consider uh, the options we have when we're building a surround for a panel. Uh, whilst we will explore in more detail the mitered version, um, there is an alternative that you should be aware of. Uh, let's have a look at that now. And on this slide, you can see the difference between a panel surround that is mitered and a panel surround that isn't. As you can see, the horizontal headers here uh, just butt up to the vertical headers. Whereas on the mitered surround, um, we have this detail in here in the corner with a 65 by 65 millimeter cut to start with. And then the two uh, mitered cuts 
that form the intersection between the horizontal and the vertical. Um, my view it's worth the effort. Um, you know, a panel is placed there to uh, attract the eye. It's what people are going to notice. So just having a, a mitered surround can just add to that uh, visual effect quite nicely. So let's look at how we set out a template uh, to form that mitre. Uh, so obviously we need a uh, pencil, we need a square and some paper in the first instance. Once we've drawn it, we're going to transfer it to a piece of timber and we'll look at how we do that also. So once I've drawn my square here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure 65 millimeter uh, increments uh, and the 10 millimeter joints for the bricks that I'm going to be laying. So 65 millimeters, 10 millimeters, 65 millimeters, and the same for the vertical. And as you can see, seeing it quite clearly, keep this nice and accurate. So 65 millimeters, 10, 65. And what I will have eventually have drawn will be the joints running along the bottom on the horizontal plane and the 65 and 10 mil for the joints running vertically just at that corner where I'm wishing to form the mitre. What I'm then going to do at the top of uh, the second course, I'm going to measure 102 millimetres, 102.5 uh, to be exact, um, which is the size of a header. And I'm then going to do the same up on the left hand side, uh, 102.5. And as you can see, once I've drawn those in, I've ended up with the 65 millimeter. You can see where the joints would be, should they were just to be there at the smoking time. And my surround, and this is the internal angle for the panel, for the mighty panel. I'm then simply going to take a line from the inside edge of the panel to the top of the 65 by 65 millimeter piece, as you can see there. And then I'm going to draw a line parallel with it, or two lines parallel with that diagonal line, uh, five millimetres either side of it to form the 10 millimetre joint. And what you'll see is we end up with that. Taking out the lines I don't need, as you can see, I've now got a 65 millimetre cut and a mitered bat and an identical mitered bat. Uh, I'm then going to cut it out and I formed a template. Now I only actually need one of those. I'm not going to make a template for the 65 by 65. I can just use my tape measure for that. But for this here, uh, once I've got that cut out in a bit of paper, I'm just going to transfer it to a bit of timber so that I can keep it. I'll only need to do it once and it goes in my toolbox along with everything else. It's, uh, it's just useful to have, should you have to do this again. And as you can see, um, I transferred this paper fixed down onto the piece of timber. I transferred the lines uh, around the uh, paper template, cut out the template, and I've then got something that will lay directly over my brick and show me the angle. Okay, so fairly straightforward. When you do transfer your template to the brick and then cut the brick, please make sure you wear the appropriate PPE. That will be goggles, that will be ear defenders and a face mask should you be using mechanical items of equipment to support you. And please make sure you're appropriately trained and qualified to use those pieces of equipment. So here we are, my bricks are cut for the mitered surround. And as you can see here, I've started to lay the first corner. It is important that you have really nice full joints and um, that just stops any unnecessary movement um, from the uh, bricks when you bed one on top of another and try not to have any excessive tapping. You want to be spreading your mortar uh, as close as possible to the joint size that you're going to be uh, ending up with. As you can see on the second picture here, uh, I've projected this slightly um, just to give it a little additional effect and we'll talk about the projections in a moment and you can see here how I've got the uh, horizontal layer of half bricks or headers uh, bedded along the bottom with uh, 
two my, of the mitered corners completed. I'll now be in a position to take up the uh, vertical headers um, for, a, for a distance. I wouldn't want to take them all the way up to the top um, without me starting to brick in. So I'm going to take them up enough to get me uh, a couple of courses. But before we just move on to looking at how we start bedding in the panel, there's a couple of things just to note around um, projecting features uh, in walls. Um, the line of sight is really important. And if you're looking at a projecting feature or a course that over sails that's above the horizontal, i.e. you're looking up to see it, then when you bed them in, you will level across the top of the brick as is shown in this particular instance here. If you're looking down below the horizontal, as is this case, then the sharp edge, the edge that people will notice, will be the underside of that projection. So you would ensure that uh, and that's where you're placing your level when you've, when you've bedded them. Hopefully the bricks aren't different enough in size that it makes a significant uh, amount of difference. Uh, but on occasions it can. So uh, just to recap there, when we're looking above our horizontal line of sight, the level line is the top of the projecting or oversailing course. And if we're looking below our horizontal line of sight, then we level on the underneath of the brick. Okay. And if I just go back, as you can see here, I would have leveled through on the underside here. That is the sharp edge, that's what people will notice. Okay, so let's get into and start on this first picture on the left hand side. Um, so we're starting to build up our basket weave panel. And as you can see, I'm laying the stretches first and I'm laying course for course. It's really important that when I lay the one core of one stretcher, I lay another. And if this was a wider panel and there were more stretcher uh, courses in there, then I would invariably put a line through and lay all of those bricks on the first course uh, at the same time. Okay. Uh, as I then move through, lay two, lay three, get up to three and then that's the height now for uh, equivalent to the first row of soldiers and what I can do is I can start to bed them in okay and uh, obviously then we're going in a boat level and, and if at all possible every now and again make sure you stand back from the wall there's very few people going to be looking at these decorative panels from the place you are when you're actually building and people don't stand that close to walls and um, so do stand back every now and again you may see some defect, some slight discrepancy that you're not seeing when you're really close up. So nice full joints again, use your pocket or your boat level to ensure that you're plumb and obviously keep them level through the top. If it's as I said a wider panel, use a line. We then repeat that process. We alternate. And so where we had stretches, we now have soldiers and vice versa. And again, course for course. As you can see, we're moving up, making it level. And then as we get to the top, one thing I should say is when we get to the top mitre, as you can see, this little feature here and here, I've repeated uh, the mitered cuts again, the 65 to 65, and use my template to cut this piece and this piece. And I'll do the same on the top. So we get the panel in all the way through. And then I'm bedding in, uh, ensuring my joints are consistent with the joints here. I'm bedding in uh, the uh, top surround. If you look here, just a reminder that this will, it will be the sharp edge because it's below my line of sight. And this would be the sharp edge and where I would want to level because it's above my horizontal line of sight. So, Let's just revisit a couple of those key things. You need to ensure that the panel or the opening that you form uh, is going to work brick sizes. Basket weave requires it to be brick sizes and for you to maintain 10 millimeter joints. Um, set out your mitre on paper, 
and then transfer it to a board. You can, of course, just draw it directly onto a board. It's just easier with paper if you make a mistake. Um, it's easy to remove those lines and correct them. And once you've cut that uh, mitered template, just save it. You've only got to do it once, and then if you need one again, you, you have it in your toolbox. When you're bedding the uh, surround and the panel itself, uh, keep full joints, okay, it's really important. And don't take those vertical uh, half brick surrounds up too high uh, before you start infilling. They're likely to be some movement. And when you're building the panel, you need to take it up course for course. Okay, so if you've got a number of stretches spread out over a distance, then all of those get laid at the first time. If it's short enough to use with your level, if not, put a line through from one side to the other. And of course, at all stages, make sure you work really safely. So hopefully, uh, just by looking at those uh, photographs, by following through on the process that we've just discussed, you'd be able to identify uh, the materials and the resources you're going to require in order to, to plan and to, to build that. Uh, you should understand now and you should be able to calculate uh, at the opening sizes required for a basket roof panel and you should be capable of producing a template to form the mica cuts and following through on those photographs and the sequence of operations uh, I, I followed uh, you should be able to detail and describe those to somebody else and hopefully you'll have a chance now to go and build um, a surround and a panel in your workshop if you do take your time be proud of the work that you do, do the best you can do, and uh, good luck.